the method of naming an organism using scientific words, using biological words, what are these called? These are known as binomial nomenclature. Underline that also, binomial nomenclature. And binomial nomenclature, see here already I started only with that concept, binomial nomenclature. So when I say binomial nomenclature, one of the two uh, parts of the name, the two parts of the name, one is the generic name, one is the specific name. What are the three rules now? Let us try understanding. The three rules of binomial nomenclature, you will get to see in the next paragraph there in your book. The three rules of binomial nomenclature. What are the three rules? Number one, the name has two parts, generic and specific. Second rule, the generic name starts with a capital letter, the specific name starts with a small letter, the lowercase alphabet. Third rule, both the generic and the specific name to be underlined. Is it mentioned there? Underlined separately. Underline separately. Okay. Underline separately. See how we write. So, as th this is exactly the uh, way of writing down the biological names. What are the three rules? Do you remember the three rules now? What are the three rules I told you? Uh, every I name should have separately. a every name should have a generic and a specific part. Uh, both the generic and the specific name has to be underlined separately. We cannot write it shall, it shall, it shall, the printed uh, we get time. So, since our handwriting, we cannot differentiate. So, we just underline. And uh, generic name starts with capital letter, specific name starts with small letter. So these are the simple rules to understand. Underline the definition of species, underline the definition of kingdom. Only that much here. Definition of species, definition of kingdom. So when, whenever we are talking about the definition of species, uh, what would be the definition of species to remember? First, first, first. Definition of species, the lowest level of classification. What is the definition of species? The lowest level of classification where organisms share similar, similar characteristics and, and they are capable of interbreeding among themselves. Capable of interbreeding. Underline the definition of kingdom also. Definition of kingdom also find out. Largest division. Largest division of Living. Classification or largest division of living organisms. What are the some one or two examples about species? Find out in your book. There are many examples, names of species given, biological names are given. Now you don't need all those biological names to remember. You don't have to remember all those biological names. You just find out uh, the names of. Let me see some important names only. Did your teacher mark some important names for you? Hmm? No. So names, man, you should remember. Homo sapiens, you should remember. Homo sapiens, you should remember. Honeybee. Then China rose. China rose. Then you also have some more uh, in the text part. In the text part also something more are there that is asked. In that table only that much. Then in that paragraph, same in that paragraph, you just underline the, the genus name of the 
house crow and the hill crow, corvus, underline that. Ah, that's in the first page, previously. The genus name. Uh, the entire species you may not be asked, but the genus name. What is the genus name of the house crow and the jungle crow, corvus? You have to remember that. Uh, the cat family, what is the family name for the cats? Felidae. And dogs, canidae. Family name for the cats? Felidae. Dogs will be canidae. Only that much to remember. Then, uh, mammalian and all we will talk about. And okay. So, from here only this one. I have already underlined for you. Now, next, after these definitions, after you are clear about the definitions, what are these definitions? Now, we try looking into uh, what would be some of the major characteristics for each of those groups. What would be some of the major characteristics for each of the groups? One more definition that we have to look into is diversity. You may take in your book also. Check there what is the definition of diversity. You are asked about this also. What is diversity? The variety of the flora and the fauna that is available on the surface of the earth. What is diversity? I think it will be just at the start. This definition is asked. It will be just at the start of the chapter. Diversity. See that diversity. At the start of the chapter only, what is diversity? What do you mean by diversity? Because the entire chapter is about the different group of organisms. Diversity means the variety of the flora and the fauna. What is the meaning of the word flora? The plant forms. Flora means the variety of the plants and the surface of the earth. Variety of plants. Variety of animals? Oh, fauna. So what does this words? Variety of uh, plants, flora, variety of animals, fauna. So these are just some examples. You have a number of them. Identification you will not be asked. Now the sequence you should know. For definition which are the most important? Kingdom, genus, species only. Take those definitions in your book also. I already asked you. Take the definition of genus. Uh, related species will be grouped under the same genus. Related species are grouped under the same genus. Uh, always to remember an example of a biological name. I already asked you to remember two, three. These two also you have to take down. It is there in your book. <coughs> it is there in your book. Panthera tigris, Panthera leo is already there in your book. Underline this whenever you are asked to cite examples. You can cite one or two examples. Definition of uh, species, you know, definition of genus. Definition of genus would be related species are grouped under the same genus and the definition of kingdom. So this is what. And the sequence you should know. This is what is called hierarchy. Hierarchy means from the biggest to the smallest group that we are talking about. The biggest where well, millions and millions of organisms are there. And here we are talking about maybe few hundreds. Few hundreds are there where uh, all the organisms are having the same. Yes, like there are many types of dogs now, so they come in the same species. No, because they don't come in the same species. I talked about one particular species of dog. Name one particular species of dog. Yeah, no, sure. Only one species I'm talking about. There are another T. I, I talk about the pugs are there and what, 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 etc. So now the German Shepherd and the pugs, they are not of the same species, but they come under the same genus. The German Shepherd and the pugs, they cannot interbreed among themselves. Understanding what I'm telling you? So these are two different species. This hierarchy you should remember. This is what I already explained you. Uh, how we see there, I'm talking about the, the genus uh, Felis and the Panthera can come under the same family. Uh, the simple example about the cats and the dogs I was telling you. Again, Felidae, Canidae can come under the same order, Carnivora. Why? Because they have similarities. Then orders like uh, the marsupials, forget about this word now, all of dreams. Uh, carnivora marsupials, you know, carnivora like those dogs and the cats, and marsupials means like those anteater, walrus, etc. No? Uh, it sounds that the, the anteater, walrus are so different from the dogs and the cats. Uh, how they can come under the same phylum? You know, there are so many similarities, that's why they come under the same phylum. Then we talk about the marsupials, They're so different they are. So when I talk about the mammalia, now that I talk about the phylum, what are the phylum? What are the different groups? Mammalia, the fishes, spices, reptilia, amphibia, and the birds. 
So they are all different groups, but they have so many similarities, that's why they come under chordates. So what is one big similarity that they all have? The presence of the bones and the cartilage and the tissues and the vertebral column and the spinal cord. These are some of the most important to talk about. So it sounds that the mammalia and the birds, we are so different. The fishes and the birds, they are so different. But no, they have so many similarities. We learn. That's why they have to look at the same uh, invertebrates. Now, we'll first of all start with the monera. We have to learn those words. Then we will talk about these groups. So now you're also asked this, what is the drawback of the two kingdom classification? What was the need for five kingdom classification? Because I started with this concept saying that the two, the two kingdom classification was the first concept that has come. Uh, what is the drawback? It is mentioned in your book also under the first uh, concept of two kingdom classification. What are the drawbacks of five kingdom class, uh, two kingdom classification? Take those two points you are supposed to remember. Read that. Read the two points and tell me if it is understood. I explained you just now. Bacteria cannot be called slons. Mm -hmm. ah, read on your own also, not a problem. See that if it is understood. Not, tell me. This is important. You'll have to study this properly. Drawbacks of two kingdom classification. Understood? Examples underlined, we'll have to remember with examples. Drawbacks, did you read? Did you read the drawbacks? What are the major drawbacks of the two kingdom classification? And that's the reason the five kingdom classification has come up. And according to the two kingdom classification, just sometimes one more question you are asked. Uh, according to the two uh, kingdom classification, what are the subdivisions of the organisms, plantae and animalia? Kingdom plantae and animalia. Then we now have to talk about that the five kingdom classification according to the flow chart you have to remember. And these are the five kingdoms we studied just now. We will look into the groups in individual. A few characteristics here to remember, but the organisms, you should be very sure what type of organisms. Let us start with Monera. Let us start with Monera. You keep underlining in your book also to remember the characteristics what you should study from here. If it is Monera, remember this group majorly contains some bacteria. Very simple organisms. Monera are all the simplest group of organisms that we can understand all the simplest group of organisms that we can understand. Monera, and then uh, what type of organisms? They are all prokaryotic. They are all prokaryotic. What about their mode of nutrition? Can be autotrophic, can be heterotrophic also. Autotrophic or heterotrophic also. Uh, do they show movement? Do they show movement? Do they move free characteristics? They don't show movement. When we are talking about the bacteria, organisms under this category, Monera, are majorly bacteria, very simple organisms. But yes, they may be autotrophic, they may be heterotrophic also. Okay. And do they have any well-developed orthogonal structures, etc.? Nothing, nothing well-developed. Example, underline and look. Two examples, Mycoplasma is mentioned there. Bacteria mentioned there. What are the examples mentioned? Monera. Underline. For Monera, what are the examples mentioned? No examples. For Kingdom Monera. Uh, okay, this point, the third point is important. I'll just ask you to take those points and you'll have to remember. So no organized nucleus. We already said no organized nucleus, meaning no organized nucleus prokaryotic. We already talked about this. Examples, you'll have to remember some examples like the bacteria, some diagrams, of, uh, images are given, but the diagrams are, uh, uh, words are not written there. And uh, another special feature of Monera is they don't have uh, well-developed organelles. They, they don't have well-developed organelles like the mitochondria, chloroplasts, etc. Nothing. They have examples you will write down, Monera, uh, bacteria, write down, add them. Examples for Monera. Examples for Monera, you will remember. 
And it is a given day, but it is not mentioned in your book. But you will be asked, what are the examples? Monera. Bacteria are some examples. We talk about kingdom protista. How are protista a bit more developed than Monera? Eukaryotic. They are eukaryotic. Uh, what is the common feature, Monera and uh, protista? Unicellular. They are unicellular. And if it is uh, eukaryotic, they may have few organelles. Nucleus is a bit more developed. Uh, next is, look into examples. Are examples mentioned? Clematomonas <laughs> and then am amoeba. All these are examples. Underline some examples to remember. Third group, fungi. When we talk about the third group, fungi. Uh, fungi, some examples to remember there when we are talking about examples. Uh, what are some examples? Mold mentioned, mold, mucus, mushrooms. All these are the examples of muc. Uh, all these are the examples of fungi. Uh, fungi majorly have also studied earlier about the fungi. That uh, what would be some of the special features? They have got cell wall. Are those features mentioned? They have got cell wall. Read that paragraph on fungi. They have cell wall, but then the cell wall is made up of chitin, not of cellulose. Is it mentioned? So, uh, mentioned that most fungi are made up of thread like hyphae huh. rather than cells, and mm -hmm. there are many nuclei distributed in the continuous cytoplasm. That's it? They are saprophytes? And, uh, they are usually multicellular, eukaryotic, a chlorophyllous, and sapro uh, saprophytic. Saprophytic, underline that word. Saprophytic, that's one special feature about the fungi to always remember. They are saprophytic in nature. Saprophytic uh, meaning uh, you'll always come across fungi in the decomposing areas. Fungi are such type of organisms, they don't have any mouth parts to take food and digest the food inside their body. Uh, but fungi is always found when the food is getting rotten, when the animal body is getting decomposed, etc. etc. So now that we are talking about the food is getting decomposed, the animal body is getting rotted, and then the process of decomposition happening. So where decomposition is happening, there fungal growth. Where decomposition is happening, there fungal growth. So this is what about fungi to remember. Next is we talk about after fungi, we now talk about uh, plantae. Plantae. What are some common features about plantae and what are some other common plants? What would be some common features of plantae? Cell wall, presence of cellulose, nucleus, eukaryotic, they are autotrophic, eukaryotic, autotrophic multicellular, photosynthetic. Some examples of uh, plants underline. Some examples of plants you underline. And then next is animalia. When I talk about animalia, what would be some features? The plant phenomena also divided into five. What is it? Into five. Ah, that we'll talk later. Uh, we talk about the animals. What would be some basic characteristics of animals? Heterotrophic. They are heterotrophic, no cell wall, no cellulose. And the mode of locomotion is there now. They have got eukaryotic, they are eukaryotic organisms, all different types of cell organelles are present, etc. So this is just the basic concept when we are talking about. This is just the basic concept when we talk about all the different groups of uh, Five kingdom classification. What are the five groups now? Monera, Protista, Fungi, and Now we have to look into the subtypes of plantae and the subtypes of animalia. Now we look into the subtypes of plantae and the subtypes of animalia. Few characteristics only to study. We don't have to look into all those characteristics. There's supposed to be some. We will try number four now. Number four. Number seven, we will try looking for this. Number eight. Number nine. The points are already there. You did not write all of it. Okay, this we will do later, though we have two questions from this. But take off your notebook and you will write number seven, eight, nine, and this you try here itself in the notebook. This you will do here itself. Number four, 
C sub number 4, which page is it? 85. 85. C sub number 4 you will do in the textbook. C sub number 4 you will do in the textbook. And 7, 8, 9 you will write in the notebook. Start. 7, 8, 9. In the notebook. Start.
as much as possible no he's answer one answer you will not be able to answer the rest three you could yes why are so, scientific names of living beings considered better than their common name ha right koi koi bhi main ko mila sometimes a certain common name is not enough to indicate a particular species sometimes a common name is not enough to indicate a particular ha correct aur iske baad bhi ek aur point likhna hai i give you three questions to answer right eight seven eight nine apart from this uh, for, uh, first point if you write not a problem now the most important point to write uh, right common names right now common names pen name indra common names or vernacular names v e r vernacular means the names that we use region wise vernacular names common names or vernacular names create common names or vernacular names create confusion common names or vernacular names create confusion and are difficult and are difficult in identifying difficult in identifying a specific plant difficult in identifying a specific plant or an animal are in fact a specific plant or an animal in different regions of a country in different regions of a country or different countries different regions of a country or different countries okay you understood no why scientific names why biological names because see if, even if i talk about our country a particular fruit or a particular plant then i would say in my language in one particular state uh the other state when we go even in our country there's a lot of confusion we come across no the same particular fruit or the same particular plant in different states named differently different languages named differently so of course now again we don't use the scientific names we don't use biological names when we have, when we have to go for shopping in the market or etc but still when it is talking about identification the common names or the vernacular names always are confusing because in different countries different languages of the same country they are all named differently so if it is one biological name one scientific name that is the same in every country that is the same in every region of the same country so that makes easier the process of identification next what are we going to learn kingdom plantae has got various groups what are the five sub groups of kingdom plantae let us talk about the first group what is the first group of kingdom plantae thallophytes what happened kuch to hua hai what happened kuch to hua from that time you are searching something i 
I saw you right giving at the bank and you forgot the bank. Now when we talk about hello fighter, so when we are talking about <laughs> what happened? Short time only. Short time. Absent minded. Professors are supposed to be absent minded, not the students right now at this age. Now, halophyter. When we talk about halophyter, look here. These are organisms which are green. That's why considered under plant. These are organisms which have got cell wall made up of cellulose. That's why considered under plants. These are autotrophic. That's why considered under plants. So that means there are so many characteristics in like plants. But do they look like plants? No, they are not looking like plants at all. They are generally ribbon-like organisms, you know, flat ribbon-like organisms, or at the most some green leaf-like structures. Leaf-like, remember, they don't have any veins or etc. So when I talk about thallophyta, what are some of the special characteristics of thallophyta? Yes, they have got the cell wall, they are autotrophic, they have chlorophyll, etc., etc. But they don't have any roots, stem, leaves, branches, fruits, glass, nothing. Where are they found? They are found in the water, aquatic media. One of the most common examples, spirogyra. You may underline those examples. There is a list of examples in your book. Those examples you'll have to identify. There's a list of examples in your book. So those examples you'll have to remember, identify. Go back previous, previous. There's a list of names. See, all those examples you should be able to identify. Spirogyra is thallophyta. We talk about the next one. See, there's some more uh, examples of spirogyra, para. See, what are the examples given in your book? Uh, Seaweed kelp. Seaweed kelp. Huh. These are also thallophytes. We talk about the next one. Thallophytes characteristics you don't have to study much. We talk about the bryophyte. Now, what are bryophyte? Now, the most common examples of bryophytes are the mosses. Now that the monsoon is still going on, we get to see those uh, green, uh, you know, uh, carpet-like structures, velvety structures on the surface of the uh, rocks and the trunk of the trees and the footpaths and etc. What are these? Now, these are bryophytes, mosses basically. And these they mosses, mosses. they are called mosses, not algae. Most most people say that these are algae. algae. These are not algae. These are mosses. Now, uh, these mosses uh, are small leaf-like structures magnified under the microscope. They appear to be structures like this, very small. So, with our eyes, it happens that it is just a continuous layer. No? And uh, these are only found in the monsoon, meaning these are always found where the region is damp, humid, moist. But the same uh, mosses, now that we get to see on the surface of the steps and the footpaths and etc., etc., by the month of November, December, you will not get to see them. It's all dried up. Why? Uh, because water is a major requisite for their process of reproduction. They need water for their reproduction. Hence, they are also called amphibians of the plant kingdom. Hence, they are also called amphibians of the plant kingdom. Bryophytes or mosses, also known as amphibians of the plant kingdom. Uh, do they have uh, parts like the plant body, exactly like the plant root, stem, leaf, branches? No, they don't have all these parts. Uh, but they may have a green leaf like body, that is it, and fine hair like structure known as roots to you know, give them the grip on the surface wherever they are growing. So, those fine uh, hair like structures known as roots can also be termed as rhizoids. They are also known as a rhizoids. Okay, is that what rhizoids mentioned? Is it mentioned rhizoids? Yes, yes. and you have to take a note of that word rhizoids. What are rhizoids? Rhizoids are fine hair like structures which uh, absorb water, give them support, so that is it. Talk about teratophytes, where do we get to see teratophytes? Always on the roadsides, teratophytes are various different type of plants and uh, quite a number of these plants are also ornamental, meaning uh, they don't need so much of water and nutrients to be grown, they can grow anyway. So these teratophytes, we get to see them growing in so many places, I suppose one is roadsides, every time you will get to see uh, teratophytes always growing. Uh, apart from that way, uh, teratophytes you will also get to see growing or kept as ornamental plants and uh, we come across some big hotels also you will see various different species of teratophytes because you don't have to water them every time and they can survive long, long periods. Uh, the airports and you know, wherever we keep for decoration, these type of plants are always used. Now what are some special features? Do they have roots? Yes. It's not the rhizoids. Now the roots are a bit more developed. Teratophytes. What, what, is, what is one common example of the teratophytes? Ferns. Ferns. This type of plants. Very common. If you take a note, 
at the roadside, very common this type of plants we get. Gardens, every time, every particular garden you go to, uh, some uh, well maintained uh, botanical gardens also, this type of plants are a must to see. So when we are talking about ferns, they belong to pteridophytes. What are some special features? They have roots, stems, leaves, yes, but they don't give rise to flowers, seeds, fruits. They don't give rise to flowers, seeds, fruits. These are also known as the true plants. Why true plants? Uh, because what were the previous two categories uh, we uh, understood just now? Thallophyta, bryophyta. Thallophyta, bryophyta, they are... They do uh, not have roots. They don't have any plant parts as such. Only because they are autotrophic cell wall cellulose, they are considered as plants. But they don't have any plant parts. Thallophytes are such type of plants which look like plants actually. Roots, stem, leaves are there. But no fruit, seeds, flowers. Uh, so, but one special feature of the pteridophyte is they have got vascular tissues. What are the vascular tissues? Xylem. So, vascular tissues are very much there. Uh, and then we move on to the gymnosperms. Now, gymnosperms, what type of plants are these? When I talk about the gymnosperms, see there, all these different type of plants, so many you have come across. Also, you have come across plants like the, uh, the palm. We talk about plants like the uh, the pine and the deodor, now especially this type of plants we come across in the cold places. Uh, this side we come across much lesser gymnosperms, but yes, eucalyptus, if you talk about it, is there in this region also. Uh, when we talk about the pine trees, the oak trees, very common, no? the pine and the oak and the deodor and the fir, these are plants which are big, big trees, but do they give rise to any fruits? Can we eat any fruit out of it? No, nothing. Uh, then what are some special features? Do they have roots? Yes, they have got well-developed roots. There are two plants, well-developed roots, stem, leaves. Flowers, do they give rise to? Yes, flowers also, but not well-developed seeds and fruits. They don't give rise to well-developed seeds and fruits. So talk about the rubber plant. Talk about the palm, talk about the uh, eucalyptus and all these that I name, all belonging to this category. This type of plants have got good economic importance, but no fruits they give rise to. The last category and the most important category, the most beneficial category are the angiosperms. Angiosperms are the absolute plants that we understand, roots, stem, leaf, branches, everything. Fruits, flowers, everything, the fruits, seeds, everything they have. And now that we talk about the fruits and the seeds, angiosperms, what are some examples I can give you for examples? Grasses, remember these are also angiosperms. Grasses, angiosperms. I talk about grasses. Did, did you see any flowers in the grasses so far? You must not have, but they give rise to flowers. So the flowers are so small, we don't even notice. Uh, the grasses are angiosperms. I talk about the mango, the guava. Of course, you know these are angiosperms. I talk about uh, uh, the rose and the lily and the jasmine. Of course, they are angiosperms. So when I talk about angiosperms, do, have, do they have all the plant parts, roots, stem, leaf, flowers, fruit, seeds, everything, till fruits, all the stages are there. But yes, not necessarily every angiosperm should give rise to a fruit. I talk about the jasmine and the lily and the lotus. No, they don't give rise to a fruit. But there's another category, angiosperms, they give rise to a fruit. But now that I'm talking about seeds and fruits, angiosperms, now that I'm talking about the seeds and fruits, uh, there are certain type of angiosperms which will uh, give rise to seeds which have got only, uh, seeds which have got only one part, one part. If I, if I talk about the rice, if I talk about the corn, check out the outer husk or the cover. It has got one part or two parts? One. one part. So that becomes monocotyledonous, monocotyledons. The P and the gram? Dicot. How? Why dicot? Take out the outer part, it has got two parts as it is. Dicot. So that is what we are talking about, the dicot and the monocot. Which are parts of angiosperms. Take all those important words that I mentioned. This is what you'll have to take a note. Other than that, nothing much to study. Take a note. Tell me first this part. Is there anything that you want to clarify? Is there anything that you want to clarify? Not understood. So majorly for gymnosperms, you'll have to remember examples. Angiosperms, you'll have to remember the characteristics and the categories. Angiosperms, two categories are there. Monocot, dicot. Now we look into... The animal kingdom. What are the parts of the animal kingdom we are going to talk about? First is invertebrates. We'll take invertebrates first. 
will take invertebrates. Now, for invertebrates, I will ask you to understand only basic characteristics. It's not possible for you because we don't teach the entire chapter. In the school also, we underline only the major features for you to understand. Give me one book, I will underline, you can share the book with him. I will show you every particular group. You will not be able to remember all these characteristics. I talk about invertebrates, yes. What are invertebrates? Write two or three characteristics. What will you write? What are some basic characteristics of invertebrates to remember? Basic characteristics of invertebrates are? Have skeleton. They will not have skeleton. So without the not Without skeleton. Yes, but then at the same time, you also understand that there are some groups of organisms which are, uh, the body is quite hard. But the body is hard not, not because of the presence of the bony skeleton, but then the body may be hard because of the presence of some uh, calcium carbonate deposits, some shells of calcium carbonate or some uh, shells of other different type of uh, mineral deposits, but not at all. Bones, cartilage, nothing they have in their body. So, first of all, is that invertebrates to understand. Now we look into the first group, porifera. Characteristics you will understand, underline. Characteristic body consists of a hollow tube. Uh, there is no single mouth but many pores. No single mouth but many pores. many pores and continue through which the water enters the body. Sponges capture their food. I 
क्यों निकल गया फिर से
Corals are what type of organisms? Nidaria, cylindrics. Colored organisms, beautifully colored also at the base of the water body. But uh, they have a proper shape of their body, but they have a proper shape of their body. Why the shape of the body? How the shape of the body? Because of a calcium carbonate skeleton like structure they have. Did you see that last line mentioned? Skeletons are made up of calcium carbonate. Again, do they have bones? No, not at all. They don't have any bones or any particular structures. We talk about the next group, flatworms, platyhelminth, <coughs> flatworms. So flatworms and platyhelminths that we are, this class is still 12 or 12, 13? 12, 15. 12, 15. 12, 15. 12, 15. 12, 15. Okay. So now, when we talk about the platyhelminth, platyhelminths means the flatworms. Uh, can you name some one or two flatworms? See there, the flatworms. Planaria. Example, sari yaad rakna hai. Planaria tapeworm. Okay, see, I'm showing you this planaria. Planaria is a type of a flatworm which is present in the water body, but it does not cause any harm to the human body. But uh, there are other different type of flatworms like the tapeworms. The tapeworms does cause harm. Liver flu. Liver flu. These are found in the intestines of the cattle, intestines of the pig. Okay. Intestines of the pig, intestines of the cattle, domestic animals also, but not in human. And this is one example, planaria, which is uh, not paras, uh, pathogenic, meaning it will not cause any disease. So these are some examples. Check, take a note of the examples given in your book. What are some special features of platyhelminth is underlined? Body unsegmented. Body is flattened, unsegmented, worm-like. Uh, now next is, uh, most of the flatworms inside animal body as parasites. Most of the flatworms, they cannot survive on their own actually. Why? Because they don't have all the specialized organs and tissues for digestion, excretion, respiration. So they majorly live as parasites. What is the meaning of parasites? Take the nourishment from other organisms' body. And those organisms' body is known as the host body. That organism's body is known as a host body. No? So now that I talk about that, these parasites, especially the liver fluke and the tapeworm, are harmful. They harm the host body. Uh, few are free living. Now see, few are free living. Example of free living is only the planaria here. You have got three examples in your book. Free living, uh, give an example of a free living uh, flat one, planaria only. So free living is only the planaria. Just circling this. Remember, this is the free living planaria, and the rest are parasites. Nematodes. When we talk about the round worms, round worms, yes, human can be. Human generally are not affected by this. Uh, the cattle and the other animals, if I talk about the camels and the sheep, goat, uh, cow, they basically remain affected by the poultry, they remain affected by this. Not human, but human may be affected by the uh, round worms. Plain cells are not there in your book, so not to worry. Uh, we talk about the round worms now. Where, where are these round worms found? They may be present in the soil. So especially gardeners and all. Uh, gardeners, farmers, they are uh, quite a number of times affected by these round worms. Also, people who don't uh, practice uh, good sanitation habits. Say, 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 suppose I talk about the slum areas and all, uh, where the sanitation uh, is a big worry. So at that time, what happens? Uh, quite a number of times, people, children who are already suffering from warm infections, uh, the waste substances that they release have got eggs in their excreta. And these eggs which are uh, you know, spread out in the soil and then uh, certain times the worms start uh, developing, provided these egg stages have entered some other individual's body. But how will the egg stage enter into some other individual's body? Uh, these egg stages which are present in the soil may also come in contact with the leaves. Also come in contact with the leaves. And if I talk about uh, the leaves which are edible, if I talk about the spinach and the lettuce and all these, the cabbages. So that's the reason always we should take care that whenever we are consuming any type of a green leaf, take note that we clean, boil, wash very thoroughly so that the egg stages, if if those nematodes and the egg stages, if at all are there in those leaves and we are consuming, because these egg stages are very, very resistant, they don't die out so soon. And uh, that's the reason we clean and boil and heat up so that the egg stages should die. If at all they are entering our body in, the, in a live form, then they will start developing inside our body. Human get affected by the round worms, especially 
S carries. When we talk about small children, basically remain infected by this. See nematodes, crown worms, uh, body cylindrical, and they have got a false body cavity. I'm going to explain you what is the meaning of false body cavity. False body cavity, that's a major feature. False body cavity, they don't have a true body cavity. What does that mean? I will tell you. False body cavity, let us finish. The alimentary canal has two ends. They have an alimentary canal, remember, but not well developed. Mostly parasite. They are mostly parasite. But now in this group, we come across nematodes. Yes, they have something known as alimentary canal. Still, did we talk about a circulatory system, a nervous system, a brain, etc., etc., etc.? Nothing. They don't have anything. So understand how simple they are as in comparison with our body. Uh, it is the nematode only that we are talking about, and alimentary canal is there. What are the previous three groups we studied? Before nematodes, what are the three groups? Lati helminthes, cylindrata, porifera. If we talk about any of those uh, systems, elementary canal or etc., etc., nothing they have, nothing they have, only few cells. Uh, nematodes. So, a nematode basically are something like this escaris. I'm going to the example. The most common nematode, you should remember the round worms, the pin worms, the hook worms. And they can, one, one I told you, how would the human get? infected yes by consuming those egg stages or there are some hookworms or pinworms which can just penetrate through our skin also so that's the reason and where are they present majorly in the soil so that's the reason i told you the gardeners farmers they always have a chance of getting infected uh, next is we talk about uh, apart from this we talk about next group is annelids annelids are the earthworms the nearest earthworms that we have already come across always in the monsoon time Annelida. Uh, Annelida, underlying, they are also known as the segmented animal form. Segmented animal form, what are some of the most special characteristics? Uh, body divided into ring like segments. Body divided into entire body divided into ring like segments. Yes or no? The entire body divided into hundreds and hundreds of ring like segments. Body divided into ring like segments. Now, they also have, just like the previous group, uh, Nema, this nematodes I was telling you, nematodes also they have got the alimentary canal. This group has got even better, uh, a well developed digestive system they have, and with uh, opening anterior and the posterior. They have got an anterior opening and a posterior opening, uh, heading towards complexity. Next is underline, they have a true body cavity. Underline this line. They have a true body cavity. What is the name of the body cavity? Silo. What is the name of the body cavity? Silo. Now, specifically for earthworm, there's a paragraph where you have to learn that earthworm, why are they known as farmer's friend? General characteristics of Annelida only yes, that. Ha. So, general characteristics of uh, Annelida only this three I told you, segmented to remember. Elementary canal present to remember and siloam present, that is what three characteristics. And the examples, what are the three examples of annelida given there? What are the three examples Leech. of annelida? Leeches, earthworm. earthworms, Leech. and nares. Nares and uh, earthworm, you often get to see. Leeches, basically, in the forest areas, if you go, no, all in the soil, not in the water. Leeches, all in the soil. If, if, if you happen to go to some garden or some thick forest areas, always you'll come across leeches get stuck. Sometimes when you go for some picnics or some uh, tracking and all, all this, uh, leeches get stuck to the uh, to our body and they start sucking the blood. No, these are also parasites, uh, leeches. Uh, earthworm, you have to read this paragraph little bit on earthworm. What are, uh, what is the significance of the earthworm? Earthworm present in the soil, how they are beneficial. Earthworm present in the soil, they make the soil fertile. How? Uh, because earthworm generally they take in the soil mix it with their saliva and again throw it out. Now this is what is known as the worm cast, worm castings. So when we are talking about the earthworms, earthworms are not feeding on the soil, but they just take in the nutrients from the soil and throw it out again. So quite a number of times in certain soil types, we get to see that the entire soil, which is not constantly even mixed also, uh, in certain soil types, if you get to see that the entire soil is in the form of some small, small, round, 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 uh, no structures, uh, round, round, uh, lobulated structures, it is clearly understood that this soil is rich in earthworms. 
good concentration of earthworms are there. But as it is, farmers would always use earthworms in the process of growing crops. They deliberately bring earthworms and spread them in the soil because these earthworms are constantly taking those worm cast, making the soil fertile, number one. Since they are burrowing down, there are so much of holes being made in the soil, trapping oxygen and the microbes in the soil get enough oxygen and the decomposition can happen much faster. So the soil is becoming more fertile. So why are earthworms known as farmer's friend? This paragraph we will read for. Why they are uh, known as farmer's friend? So this particular paragraph we'll have to read. What are some of the significance of earthworms? And next is we talk about that they are nocturnal. Yes, these are basically nocturnal organisms. And the basic parts of the earthworm, not much necessity here, economic importance of earthworm. This is very, very important. That is what I told you just now. Uh, how are earthworm very, very beneficial? The body parts, not much importance at all. Then next is we talk about all these parts. Go through all these points and tell me if it is understood economic importance. Read those points once. Done. Before your exam, again, but Friday uh, you don't have. We have one lecture on the exam. Friday. Friday is not special. Friday normally by our time. Yes, Friday. This coming class, Friday. No, in this three-hour lecture, where this is the only class. No, no, this Friday why you don't have a class? Why you all are not coming? We are, we have three-hour lectures. Six-hour lectures. Six okay, okay. This this coming Friday. Okay. We can actually buy a dial like that. Physics is more than physics. Or a color be physics. Color so be physics. Or skin bath be physics. I think. Color be bio be done. Bio be done. Bio be done. All the science. That's true. See the next. No, slide. but for your exam, we are, which are the portions we are still left with? This. Economic importance and nutrition. And nutrition. Okay. So this uh, we will be able to finish today. Not much. And. Uh, Nutrition, in fact, that's those two tables. Huh? Uh, let's see. Just 10 more minutes, we will just finish with this. So, I told you to read this uh, few uh, points clear. No? This will take a note. Come to Arthropoda. All the different type of uh, insects. When we talk about arthropoda, all the different types of insects, uh, the prawns, the shrimps, okay, all these come under us, arthropoda. What are some characteristics underlying? What are some characteristics of arthropoda? Uh, largest number, that is also one uh, feature that you should remember. Arthropods are the largest category of uh, animal, uh, the largest number of species are there. It is the largest group of the animal kingdom. Next is we talk about what is one special feature. They have got an exoskeleton made of chitin. They have got an exoskeleton. The outer cover, the outer cover of the cockroaches, for example, if you see, is a bit hard. Uh, so what is that outer skeletal structure known as? <laughs> exoskeleton, what is it made right. up of? Chitin. And at the same time, they undergo a process known as molting. And they also have jointed limbs. See the first point, jointed limbs. Jointed limbs, something like us, when we talk about the legs of the cockroaches, did you ever notice? Uh, it, is, it, it is not a straight structure. See, for right now, when I showed you uh, this uh, structures of the earthworm, see, they also have got some leg-like structures, but their legs are, how would their legs be? Uh, if I talk about the body of the earthworm, the legs of the earthworm are like, just like this. The legs of the earthworm are straight, straight coming up. But if I have to draw, if this is the cockroach body and if I have to draw the legs, how will I draw? The legs are like this. Certain two, three parts jointed, exactly same like us. Two, three parts jointed. That's the reason it is known as jointed appendages. And jointed appendages first, we come across in arthropods. So that is one special feature about arthropoda to remember. And next is what? 
exoskeleton. What is the substance? Chitin to remember. Molting. What is molting? These group of insects, they keep hard. They keep growing. So as the, uh, Outer skin, covering they becomes smaller. So they no? remove it. They remove it. They shed it down. And the new covering is formed. So this is how the organism keeps growing. Examples you will have to remember. What are examples given there in your book? All the various types of organisms like the crabs and the scorpion and the cockroaches. All these are answer forms that you have to remember. We talk about the mollusks. What about the mollusks then? Mollusks are whatever organisms present in the water body, the pond, the lake and the sea and the ocean. See those types of organisms are mollusks. Soft body but they have got a hard shell. Soft body but they have got a hard shell. Now these soft bodied organisms are that they have got a hard shell. These shells are made, made up of calcium carbonate. Okay. Uh, from the water that uh, wherever they are present in. The body is soft inside. Do they have well developed systems? Not much. Uh, do they have a body fluid? Uh, body fluid in case of arthropods also they have, but nothing that they have got a red body fluid like us. It can be other colors also. Mollusks, few characteristics. See, they're soft, unsegmented body. The body is not divided into segments like the arthropoda, arthropoda or the annelids. Which, which group is the true segmented organisms? Annelida. Annelida. Arthropoda, much lesser number of segments. Then you have to remember the hard calcareous shell. That is something to understand. Hard calcareous shell. And muscular foot. Now, see that the muscular foot. See, look at the example of a snail there. Did you ever see a snail moving? Did you ever see a snail moving? This is the muscular foot like structure that they have. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the muscular foot. This is the uh, tentacles. This is the muscular foot like structure that they have. Now, the shell is there, the main body, and at the anterior end, there'll be two uh, tentacles for the snails. And that is what they help in sensation, and the snail moves. But as the snail moves at the back of the shell, if you have noticed, there's a small extension of the muscles which is known as the muscular foot. And this muscular foot balances and keeps the organism moving forward, contracts, contracts, and keeps moving. The muscular foot, and these are the tentacles for sensation. Then underline some few features, muscular foot you have to remember, and some examples, nothing much. And what is the muscular foot helping in? Contraction and helping in locomotion. Echinoderms, we have got, which are echinoderms? We are the present, the starfishes, the echinus. All these organisms, where do we find them? Sea, ocean, majorly. Uh, echinoderms, by the word, echinoderms from the spiny uh, characteristics of their body. The body is spiny. If you happen to hold the star which is a little prick, it's spiny. Uh, and then inside is all water filled. Inside is all water filled. It's not that all they have got developed tissues and uh, structures. Underline some features. Unsegmented body, remember? Absolutely many. Exoskeleton is spiny. They also have got an exoskeleton, but uh, the entire exoskeleton is fine. Underline the word tube feet. They move by tube feet. Now, what is tube feet? Here, when I talk about the tube feet, look at the internal surface of the starfish. If I talk about the body of the starfish here, uh, the body of the starfish would be something like this. Inside the body, there is an arrangement of some tubular structures. And just like the cygon and all those organisms, what did we learn? Why porifera? Why cyclon comes out of the group porifera? Because it has got pores. Now, here in the body of the uh, starfishes also, there is some pores. And through these pores, the water enters into, into this tube-like structure. Something like the tires that we have. The tires have got those tubes inside where the air is to be filled in. Exactly this way, the starfishes have got this tubular structures inside where water is constantly filled. And wherever the water moves, the force of the water is this side, the organism is moving this side. What is this called? The water vascular system. This is called the water vascular system that they have. Do they have blood? No. Do they have well-developed bones, structures, muscles, tissues? Nothing. They just have got few cells and structures. Tissue level they have. Elementary canal, yes, they have, but nervous structures and all they don't have. And they have got this water-driven system. That is the meaning of water-driven system. I'm like tube feet. What is the meaning of this tube feet? What is the meaning of tube feet? Water fills in, and as the water falls, the organism moves. Tube feet to remember, and uh, that's all, and nothing much. How many? Uh, 
how many arm like structures they will have this group of organisms generally five and then that point also to remember generally five now this questions i want you to do we we'll complete with this a little bit more what do you want to do today or you want to do later today today what do you will not take too much time what do you is just a comparative account if you want to do the questions you can try at home what do you do it today just it will take another 5 to 10 minutes you want to finish it off yeah okay 15 minutes ha what do you is i'll just give you a comparative account and that you'll take it down and uh, nothing much to understand here just take a comparative account and this comparative account you will have to remember the same things you are going to study but uh, as we talk about the fishes amphibians lots of examples these examples you have to take them all these examples you have to take them okay all these examples and all these examples you should remember let us start with this comparative uh, account Uh, please, uh, you write it down, or should I dictate? And you will write it down. Make a table very fast. Let me see if I have this here. Don't think so. Let us take this table. So, if you have this table with you, it's very easy for you to remember. Vertebrates, five groups only. vertebrates five groups and few characteristics only to study i start with physis the first group is it table ka banana hai ha to take it in a comparative way it is much easier for you to remember we talk about four limbs and hind limbs you understand two pairs of limbs amphibians may or may not have tail four limbs hind limbs and tail pair of limbs only one head 
thorax, abdomen. Four limbs and hind limbs only. Four limbs and hind limbs. Skin. Four pieces. Scales. Skin. Just write it open this time. Pieces, you have scales there. What about amphibians? Mucus glands and skin is slimy. Reptiles, skin is dry. Small scales present. Scale present. Eggs, what will be right? Four limbs modified to feathers. Mammals, hairs on the scale, certain glands are always there for the mammals. Respiratory organ, gills, gills and lungs, 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 sebaceous glands, oil secreting glands, sebaceous glands. Next is These are the common ones and then after that some special features I will ask you to underline. That's it. That we have to study. Four is her. This is vices two chambered. Amphibians three chambered. Reptiles three chambered. Except for crocodiles. Except for crocodiles, which has four chambered hearts. Apes, four chambered. Mammals, of course, four chambered. What are the names of the chambers, auricles, upper chamber, lower chambers are known as ventricles. That's it. Body temperature. Fishes are cold blooded, poikilotherms, check this word, poikilotherms, cold blooded animals, meaning when the external temperature is low, their body temperature falls, when the external temperature is high, their body temperature rises. Cold blooded, they are not able to maintain a stable body temperature. Amphibians also the same. You can write here same. No need of writing the same thing. It's the same here. 
amphibians also same, reptiles also same. Okay, the same thing here. What about amphibia apes? Apes are warm blooded. Apes are warm blooded, so we are known as homeotherms. Poikilotherms and we are homeotherms. Same here for mammal. Same here for mammal. Now look into your textbook, some special features. Now this is the basic comparative that you should easily remember. Apart from that, few more features to remember. Now fishes, look into that paragraph. Fishes, see there, there are two main types of fishes. What are the two main types? Okay, finish this, then we will, tell, I will ask you only to underline some few words, that is enough. How did they teach you this chapter in school? PPT. So PPT. Writing one, writing one. Ma'am, which uh, points were the PPT is about the or simple points? Points regarding the uh, questions in your book or what? No, uh, points for specific uh, characteristics. Uh, for specific uh, paragraph, for example, phylum, cold, and data. Uh, ah, so are the yeah. characteristics are extra characteristics or only from the book? Only from the book. Because what is there is already more than enough for you. Extra, if she is giving you, because nine standard, it's our decision. If your teacher is giving extra, then I have to talk extra. Otherwise, if it is strictly to the book, then no need. Okay, it's an asymmetrical was uh, radial. No, that radial. I, I have not talked about. I'll tell you that. First, we'll finish with this. Done? Now, look into vices. Look into those individual groups. What are some of the additional features that you should know? Number one, fishes can be two types. Now, apart from all these characters, these characteristics are easy to remember. Vertebrates are always easy to remember. Now, uh, vices, when I talk about the characteristics, what is it? Two types of fishes can be there. One is I talk about the cartilaginous fish and the other I talk about is the bony fishes. Now see there, cartilaginous means what? Uh, when I talk about the pomfrets, are you all non-vegetarians? Then palashkali is much more difficult to say. So when I talk about some soft fishes, no soft fishes, there are some soft fishes, suppose I talk about a pomfret as an example. So for a pomfret what's happening? The body is soft. The body is soft. Uh, the entire fish can be eaten up also because it has got entire body is just made up of cartilage. But I talk about the big fishes. I talk about the shara, so I talk about the carbs also. No? These are big fishes where the head part, the internal entire spinal cord is a bit, uh, oh, it is quite hard. The entire spinal cord is quite hard. The head part is quite uh, tough it is, quite strong it is. It is very tough, very hard. So, not every fish has got that tough head and the spinal cord. So, spinal cord meaning it is there, but then it is not bony. Spinal cord is there, but it is not protected by the bony layer. So, when we are talking about certain two categories of fishes are always there. One is the soft fishes and the other is the hard fishes. The soft fishes are known as the cartilaginous. Say, suppose again when I talk about the soft fishes like the, uh, the sharks and the dogfish. Now, the dogfish also known as those I uh, know those uh, small sharks rather. Uh, the entire body is just made up of cartilages. It does not have prominent bones inside. For amphibians, what to remember? Amphibians, they have got a eardrum. Eardrum or tympanum. Eardrum or tympanum is a basic characteristic for us. Remember, amphibians also possess that on the top of their heads, very close to their uh, skin. They have got uh, very close to their eyes. They have got the tympanum. Uh, how many fingers? They have got webbed feet. Amphibians, they will have webbed feet. How many digits in one feet? Five. Five. Talk about the eggs. Now, again, one more, one more difference uh, I should have mentioned here. Uh, their method of reproduction. What is their method of reproduction? If I take that, that is also a major method of uh, point of uh, difference. If I talk about reproduction, I should say here that these are oviparous, meaning egg-laying organisms. Same here. 
oviparous uh, reptiles same here what about apes apes also same here but only mammals are viviparous where they are not egg laying forms where the organisms give rise to the birth of a complete organism not egg laying form so how about the eggs if it is a amphibian eggs are soft soft eggs leathery eggs the rest of the characteristics already i discussed here in the table come to the next group that is uh, reptiles oh le reptiles only i was talking about now come to the next group amphibians amphibians rest all the characteristics i have discussed except for the scaly legs the legs of the birds they have got small small scales small scale they are also termed as scutes Uh, small scales eggs what about the eggs the wow. egg for a bird always we all know it is quite hard but the eggs of the reptiles are not hard it is softer okay eggs of reptile soft eggs of birds hard now for mammals what are some special features that you have to remember mammals are viviparous they give birth to young ones not eggs what next the skin has got uh, hair and all these features i already talked about Uh, and then one more special feature for the mammals is the presence of the testes in the males. Underline that the reproductive organs, testes in the males, ovary in the females, and the mammary glands in the females. So these are some special features of the mammals. Also has to be remembered the testes uh, in the scrotum. So that is one special feature. Underline up there mammary glands. Did you see there mammary glands in the females? Check there. Mammary glands nourish the young ones after the process of childbirth. So the presence of the mammary glands in females and testes in the scrotum are distinctive characteristics of mammals. And we have got the external ear. No, it is only mammals which group has got this external ear. No other group has this. And the one distinctive male and the female feature. Now these are all repetitions. These tables are all repetitions. So just go through these points now. From here, whatever I ask, at this table and this underlined words is more than enough for you. And for all the examples, you should know all these examples. You should know. Okay, they'll give you examples for sure. Now some questions that I want you to try as homework. Now these questions you'll be able to do now. The MCQs you will try now. All these questions you'll be able to do. MCQs you will do. Match the columns you will do. Uh, number four, which group names? Group names we will do. Number okay. seven we will do. Okay. Number seven we will do. Okay. And C sub number one. Name this. This few questions you will try as homework. Well. Next class when we meet, we will complete with this chapter and move on with nutrition. चालीस रुपए का रिक्शा ना पड़ेगा चल तब तक तब दे अभी वहां जाके खाया क्या दस है दस है दस अच्छा